welcome back to the channel with mr chen okay today we will be looking at a grade 9 lesson and the general topic is introduction to the project now what this lesson will focus on is getting the students to have a wider understanding of what to do when they are doing their project so before we get in depth let us look at what is the definition of a project a project is a planned activity or venture that is geared towards achieving an aim note briefly for the grade 9 project the students are required to do a business venture in agriculture with the aim of making a profit for example kalaloo production and sales hot pepper production and sales greenhouse production of tomatoes propagation and sales etc all right so overall not only will the grade 9 students get theory but they will also do an activity or what we term as project a business project to be exact so they will get a chance to plan that project and also to execute that project starting up that business put it in action and sell those produce or product and gain a profit or income so it will provide them with that experience in economy all right however we will get straight into the planned activity for this lesson we are just going to expose the students to a number of business ideas before we get them to do the project so the subtopic to be covered in this lesson are number one definitions of open field farming and controlled environment number two advantages and disadvantages of open field farming and controlled environment and third different examples of controlled environment farming and their parts and functions we are going to get into this lesson so please stay tuned okay definition of open field farming open field farming is an unenclosed area of land that is farmed on also it can be defined as farming outside without the provision of any form of protection to the crops with this type of farming the crops are exposed to the rain sun insects leaching of nutrients soil erosion flooding every winds etc all right so in short this type of farming is the original farming that is done outdoor but with this type of farming it will lack technology and the crops will be exposed to the elements of the weather all right let's move on all right example of an open field farm all right so from this diagram you can see that the crops are here they are in the environment sun can catch these plants at will if it rains rain will catch these plants they are exposed to pests and insects there are no barriers to protect them as you can see in the diagrams there are no technology to protect the crops from insects or to even supply water to the plants or ground cover to handle the weed growth for example so this is a typical open field farm setting and you might be familiar with farms outdoor that are very simple well that is an example advantages of growing crops in open field environment all right so there are actually some good things about this method of farming number one large-scale mass production of crops can be accommodated all right number two irrigation by rain is make use of number three less expensive to start than the controlled environment farm 
disadvantages of growing crops in an open field environment. So the bad things about it. Number one, farms are exposed to pests and diseases, extreme weathers such as flooding, droughts, heavy winds, leaching of nutrients, soil erosion, etc. that may negatively affect production. Number two, farms are exposed to predator larceny and animal destruction. Number three, habitat destruction. Number four, weed control is difficult as weed seeds can be spread by wind, water, and insects. And number five, air pollution. So as you can see, the main disadvantage is that the crops outside are exposed to a wide variety of elements that may affect production negatively. Definition of controlled farming environment. Controlled Environment Agriculture CEA, is a technology-based approach towards food production. The aim of CEA is to provide protection and maintain optimal growing conditions throughout the development of the crop. CEA technologies include hydroponics, aquaculture, and aquaponics, etc. Alright, so basically, the control environment agriculture is typically, as it says, a technology-based agriculture. So technology is applied in these methods to help improve production of the crops or the farm in general. Advantages of growing crops in a controlled environment. So the good things about it. First one, crops can be protected from pests diseases and other hazards such as heavy rain or direct sun. Second one, weed management is easier as the spreading of weed seeds are limited due to barriers, serum, glass, plastic. Third point, less predial larceny and that's step. Number four, protection from pesticide residues. The fifth one, little space is used to produce more crops. Crops can be planted and shelves. Example in greenhouses, hydroponics, etc. And the sixth point, soil erosion and landslide are prevented. All right, so you can see where vertical farming is encouraged in this type of agriculture, this type of farming. And you see where the crops are more protected from the elements disadvantages of growing crops in a controlled environment expensive to start and operate secondly low pollination rate third if by chance pests and diseases are introduced it can easily spread if not noticed quickly all right so we're going to move into the next section of the lesson examples of controlled environment Technology. So the rest of the lesson will be focused on different controlled environmental technologies. So here we have hydroponics. Now hydroponics is the practice of growing plants in nutrient solutions without the use of soil. Instead of the soil, the plants may be rooted in small amounts of peat, sand or rock wool. Alright, so it is basically growing plants in liquid and nutrient solution which is liquid the liquid would be moving water uh, it can be still water hydroponics however in our example we will look at um, a moving water hydroponics all right so with this system it has a number of important parts you need to know them all right one part of the hydroponic system here is that here you have the water reservoir so this container is what would contain the water solution with the nutrients and other important chemicals to balance the pH of the soil all right so here is a water bed reservoir very important now here is a container that would hold the plants in place and this is where the water would be supplied and it would run in this tube and then go back into this reservoir here so so this is the second part which is the container that holds the plants all right 
The third important part is the water pump. So with the hydroponic system, it is installed with a water pump that will suck water from this reservoir and take it up to this container with the plants and supply the plants with nutrients and water. Please note that the roots of the plants would be in this water that is constantly moving. All right, so those are the main parts. The water reservoir, the water pump, the container with the plants and the plants. All right, very important. All right, so key points with the hydroponic system. Number one, hydroponic system use little land space. So very important, it can be placed in the yard and veranda, it can be done in a greenhouse, it can accommodate vertical farming, etc. Number two, the water pump is put in place to help move the water from the reservoir to the plants. All right. And number three, water going to the plants is rich in nutrients. So remember that water from the reservoir is rich in nutrients. When it's going, that water is going to the plants, it will have a lot of nutrients for the plant. However, at number four, water leaving the plants and going back to the reservoir has little to no nutrients. All right. So once that water goes to the plants, the plants will take out the nutrients and filter out the water, filter out the nutrients out of the water. So the water going back to the reservoir would have small amount of nutrients. All right, number five, nutrients may be inorganic. So in this system, inorganic fertilizers are used. All right, number six, water solution will become acidic or alkalinic after a while. So regular pH testing should be done. Number seven, an alkaline substance that can be added is baking soda. So if your water is acidic, then you can add baking soda to neutralize it, all right? Number eight, an acidic substance that can be added is lime water. So if your water gets too alkaline, then you can add lime water to balance the pH or to neutralize the solution. Aquaponics. Now, the aquaponics, this involves the rearing of aquatic animals along with a hydroponics system. All right, so aquaponics here means water. All right, so we're talking about animals that live in water, such as their crayfish, their fish, etc. All right, so of course, the aquaponic system is a modification of the hydroponic system. So let us look at the parts and what is different with the aquaponic system and the regular hydroponic system. All right. The aquaponic system comprises of all the parts of the original hydroponic system that we looked at, right? So it has the containers for the plants. It have your drain pipe, it have a reservoir, it have a water pump, all right, and it have pipes that tape and water to these plants. However, the important modification is that the reservoir, in the reservoir, fish or other aquatic animals would be raised there. All right, so this system has aquatic animals in it. In this case, in this diagram, we have fish, all right? All right, so it has some important points. The difference is that no inorganic fertilizer is used in this system. The fish here will produce all that waste, all that nutrients that the plants would use up here. All right, so all that nutrients would come from the fish and this system is organic. All right, so you would not use inorganic nutrients in this system. Are on the plants. All right, this system also can be posed in greenhouses, it can be done indoor, it can be done vertically, etc. So, let us look at some important points. All right, so key points with the aquaponic system number one, nutrients from the plants are supplied by the waste from the fish, the aquatic animals. All right. So the nutrients come from the fish. Number two, it is organic farming. No inorganic fertilizers 
is added to this system. Very important. Number three, the raw waste from the aquatic animals, fish, can be applied immediately to the plants because it produces its own fungi that breaks down the waste and make it safe. Unlike raw chicken, manure has to be broken down for nine months before use because it contains salmonella and E. coli bacteria that can be transferred to us via the plants. So what this is saying is that with this type of farming, the waste from the fish can be used immediately on the plants to fertilize the plants. And unlike chicken waste, you, can't, you do not use the raw chicken waste on your plants. You will allow that waste to be broken down for nine months because the salmonella and E. coli bacteria that can be contracted by humans, they are present in the raw chicken waste and it is not safe to use the raw chicken waste on the plants immediately. All right? But with the aquatic animals waste, you can use that waste immediately on the plants because it produces its own fungi that break down those harmful bacteria. All right, now point number four, aquaponic system can be done indoor, all right? So it can be done indoor, it uses less land space and it can be done vertical. All right, so let's move to another system. All right, so the nutrient flim technique. The nutrient flim technique is a hydroponic system that supplies plant roots with nutrients and excess oxygen. All right, so the nutrient flim technique, again, as you can see, it is an hydroponic system. However, it is slightly modified that more oxygen is added to this system. That's the main difference. All right, so let's look at this diagram. So as I said, it is an original hydroponic system, but it has a modification. What you can see is that added to the system is an air pump. All right, so to the reservoir, with the nutrient film technique, you would add a water pump to the system. And this water pump will add more oxygen to the nutrient solution. Now, the more oxygen the plants get, the quicker they will mature. Alright, so this system is very, very efficient and productive, very fast. Alright, so the key points with nutrient flame technique is that number one, an air pump is added to the reservoir to supply more oxygen to the nutrient solution. Number two, oxygen helps plant plants grow faster by, by helping them to respire more. Right? So the oxygen here would increase respiration of the plants, which is the production of energy, etc. All right, number three, inorganic fertilizer is used. All right, so in this system, inorganic fertilizers, there are 20, 20 other water soluble nutrients are used. Number four, the system can be done vertically. So it can be done vertically. So vertical farming can be practiced with this system. All right, growth boxes. Growth boxes, this is an enclosed structure that is used to grow the plants in. It normally consists of an irrigation system, a light, and a ventilation system. Let's look at this diagram. All right, so this is a box that is created here. All right, so this is your growth box. Now your growth box is affixed with shelves the light bulbs for light for photosynthesis you have holes for ventilation for airflow right containers that collect excess water down here so of course you have your water supply system that would supply water to the plants and another container that collect the water here and you have fans for ventilation all right so it is a box but it is equipped with all the equipment to provide the right conditions for the plants to grow in. And this can be kept indoor, on your veranda, in your house, etc. Alright, trout culture is the next farming method. Alright, trout culture. Trout culture involves growing crops in shallow bins 15 to 20 centimeters deep and 60 
to 70 centimeter wide all right so the truck culture the trucks are basically some bins that are made you can make them out of wood plastic concrete etc all right trucks can be filled with an inert soilless medium such as rock wool and are connected to a drip system which supplies water and nutrients in solution so after you make those trucks you can put your soil in it and you can add an irrigation system to it so let's take a look at this diagram all right so here is your truck which is this box but it has specific measurements all right your truck has specific measurements so the height of the box or depth is 20 centimeter in this diagram all right the width is 70 centimeter here so this is your trot here and in that trot it is filled with soil so here you have your soil medium here and of course you can install a water supply system which is this system here to supply the plants with water so you have your plants here your measurement of your trot and your water supply system now this system these trots car bins can be made and placed in your greenhouse inside your homes etc all right you can make them vertically as well etc all right so let's move on all right the next farming method that is urban and peri-urban farming so as you know this is the cultivation of small areas of land usually less than two acres in or near cities towns and villages and on buildings so you can farm close to those buildings or even on those buildings so let us look at this diagram all right so as you can see this is an area that has a lot of houses now the farms here are built are practiced around or close in close vicinity to those buildings as you can see here you can also see on this building which is a deck roof you have farming being done on the roof all right so those are using up less land space and using up more air space all right so let's move on all right the next one here is containerized gardening all right very important for persons living in the cities for those persons who want to take farming closer to them closer to their home this is a very suitable method all right so containerized gardening is the cultivation of crops in any available container such as drum bottles etc any available container all right so let's look at this diagram as you can see we have different containers with plants of course your containers should be perforated it should have holes in the bottom for drainage all right you want excess water to be drained and more here also in the soil for respiration so we have a different type of container here and a different type here all right so persons can use your drink bottles your buckets your drums your pvc pipes to make different container containers for your farming all right now the last technology that we will look at is the greenhouse technology now the greenhouse technology is a building structure primarily made of glass or sheets or clear plastic in which temperature and humidity can be controlled for the cultivation or protection of plants so the greenhouse is basically a uh, building all right let us look at this there this is a greenhouse let's look at the uv plastic or glass so on the top you could have uv plastic that will take rain off the plants or snow it could be glass as well all right on the side you have a perforated mesh which is it, it is filled with holes all right for air to come through but it limits the passage of insects such as your siran so your siran can be used on the side all right now here the structure is the entrance so you would equip it with your entrance and a foot bar to the entrance all right so persons coming in would wash their feet etc to prevent biodiversity or the transfer of other diseases to your plants from one year also you have your vents so your vent is openings to allow hot air to come through you can also have fan inside 
you can put in your irrigation system on this greenhouse inside you could put a thermometer along with your computer to monitor the temperature you could put inside a misting system to cool your plants etc all right so key points of the greenhouse number one it is designed to keep out diseases and pests very important unlike the open farm and the monoculture they are done openly all right number two it can accommodate other farming methods such as hydroponic systems your container farming trout culture etc number three other systems can be added to it in order to help with different production for example irrigation system ground cover automated temperature control system fans on other ventilation system so all these non-conventional methods they have a lot of advan um, advantages and they can be modified to suit your needs all right so we are at the end of the lesson and in order to get automatic update of videos please subscribe to the channel but not only please hit the bell icon so it is important that you know that you can actually subscribe to the channel but you do not receive videos in order to receive all your videos the bell icon it has three options ensure you hit the all option so you might see private you might see none you want to hit the all option to get all the videos if you do not you will not get all the videos automatically and also please tell a friend or two about the channel thank you for watching